So, uh, Shalom, and um, I'm David Menser, Israeli government spokesman. It's Monday, the 10th of June, day 248 of the October 7th war, eight months since the Hamas army of terror invaded our country and carried out their atrocities. Israel's objectives for this war are the destruction of Hamas's military and governing capabilities, the freeing of all of our 120 hostages, 43 are unfortunately no longer alive, and ensuring that Gaza no longer poses a threat to Israel. The precise framework proposed by Israel during the negotiations maintain these principles while establishing conditions for transition between the stages. All of our objectives are within reach, and of course this war could end this very afternoon if Hamas lay down their arms and release all of our hostages. So after this weekend's dramatic uh, and breathtaking events, I want to start by paying particular tribute to Israel Police Yamam Squad Commander Chief Inspector Arnon Zamora. Uh, Arnon was 36 and from Vaseret Sion near Jerusalem. He was a devoted husband, uh, a father, uh, and a father of two. He will be forever known as a hero of Israel. He was shot and critically injured by Hamas terrorists guarding three of our four hostages rescued on Shabbat on Saturday. At the initiative of the Prime Minister, the government approved renaming of the hostage rescue operation to Operation Arnon. The Prime Minister said, quote, similar to the Rabin government's support for the proposal to name the operation to free the hostages at Entebbe, Operation Yonatan, after the commander of the assault force who fell in the battle, I am certain the government will unanimously support the proposal to name the operation to free the hostages in Gaza, Operation Arnon, after the commander of the assault force who fell in battle, hero of Israel, Arnon Zamora, end quote. It was indeed uh, past. May his memory be a blessing forever. Next, the IDF has investigated the issue of Abdallah al-Jamal, a Hamas operative in his own family home in Nusrat. He held our hostages, Almog Mer Yan, Andrei Kozlov, and Shlomi Ziv captive Al Jamal also was listed as a, a journalist on the Al Jazeera website. You know, Israel faced a lot of flack for kicking Al Jazeera out of this country, but no press vest will cleanse the crime he committed. And to Al Jazeera, and to Al Jazeera we say, what on earth is this terrorist doing on your website? Now, we need to talk about the elephant in the room. We always say our fight is with the genocidal murderers of Hamas and not with ordinary Gazans. But as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs said this morning, we also know that many Gazan civilians participated in killing, in raping and kidnapping Israelis on October 7th. It's also been reported that Gazan civilians are paid by Hamas, paid by Hamas to hold hostages captive in their homes. Look, Hamas is intentionally involving the civilian population of Gaza in its war crimes, and we would be extremely happy to be corrected, but we have yet to see anyone in the world condemn Gazan support for these Hamas atrocities. Now to the north of Israel, where yesterday, Sunday, terrorists fired an anti-aircraft missile, uh, missiles towards IDF fighter jets above, Le above Lebanon. That terror cell was eliminated near Tyre. Our fighter jets are striking Hezbollah in Sheba, in Etarun, Markaba, Hula, and Atiri. Now an update from Kogat and their work coordinating aid into Gaza. Yesterday, 167 humanitarian aid trucks went into Gaza. 
uh, truck convoy entered via Gate 96 directly to northern Gaza, eight tankers of fuel and four tankers of cooking gas were transferred to Gaza. Close to four tons of food aid were airdropped over Gaza. And our daily reminder that the contents of over 900 aid trucks, that's a lot of aid, 900 aid trucks currently await being picked up on the Gazan side of Kerem Shalom. Will someone from the United Nations or any of the aid agencies please pick it up and distribute it? We also announced the establishment of the 11th field hospital in Gaza to provide aid to Gazans. In cooperation with the Rama organization, IDF and Kogat, the field hospital compound has recently begun operating in the Al Mawasi area within the humanitarian uh, safer zone in Khan Yunis. Uh, this hospital, the seventh to be established in Al Mawasi, will be operated by the Red Crescent and is expected to include 40 beds, three operating rooms, and an intensive care unit. Also, 88% of all coordination requests on distribution are approved. The daily humanitarian distribution pause takes place, as usual, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. every day, uh, this time in the al uh, neighborhood in Khan Yunis, to enable the movement of humanitarian aid. So, since the beginning of this war, more than 34,000 trucks have de been uh, delivered uh, into Gaza, that's more than 658,000 tons of aid, more than enough food for everyone uh, in Gaza, uh, uh, which have gone in. More food and aid enters Gaza every single day, 80% more food compared to what was entering Gaza prior to October the 7th. So that's the end of our briefing today. I'll now happily take your questions, which you should put in the chat with your news outlet. Thank you very much. First question, please. First question is from Dan Williams from Reuters. Uh, will Ben Gvir and or Smotrich be admitted to the War Cabinet? Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Dan. Uh, I haven't got anything to add to that. Um, uh, the, de the decisions which the Prime Minister uh, will be taking uh, over the next uh, number of days will be announced uh, in the usual way. Um, next question. Second question from Dan Williams. Can you confirm or deny that the U.S. is looking into, a, into making a direct deal to free American hostages from Gaza? Thank you for that question, uh, Dan. We have called on all countries, all countries, to put as much pressure on Hamas as they possibly can to release the hostages, whether they have citizens, uh, dual Israeli citizens, or their citizens uh, uh, in, in uh, Hamas captivity, we're calling on all countries to do whatever they can uh, to get hostages out. I have seen those reports uh, to which you refer, and uh, we are encouraging all countries to put maximum pressure uh, on Hamas to get hostages out of their grips. Um, next question, please. Question from Mark Anderson, AFP. What is your response to criticism that Israel violated its legal duty to protect civilians by carrying out Saturday's hostage rescue operation during the day, when more people were in the Nuzirat market area? Thank you for that question, uh, Mark. Um, I think it's the ultimate chutzpah. You know what that word chutzpah means. It's the ultimate cheek for Hamas themselves to steal our people hide them in crowded civilian areas, inside uh, uh, civilian homes, inside uh, families where they've been put to work from the latest reports from the uh, current release hostages, uh, to put them in those apartments uh, in crowded civilian areas and then chastise Israel for doing its utmost to release our hostages. I'm sorry, you do not get to steal our people, hide them in crowded civilian areas, and then complain about civilian casualties. Israel will always do its utmost to protect civilians uh, from uh, any harm uh, in this war. Our battle is, of course, with Hamas rather than uh, with Gazan civilians. But Hamas should be under no illusion, 
and everyone listening around the world should be under no illusion that hiding our people uh, in civilian areas, in crowded areas, will not stop us. And Hamas hiding in UNRWA facilities, uh, it will not stop us, will always first and foremost try and limit any damage uh, to civilians. Uh, every civilian casualty is a tragedy. But Hamas should be under notice. They know this by now. It will not stop Israel either rescuing its hostages or going after this Hamas genocidal enemy. It's one of our war aims to destroy Hamas. And every single day we're going after them and we are destroying this genocidal murderous organization. And we are bringing our people home at the same time. Uh, this uh, attempt by Hamas to try and regain the narrative almost immediately. You saw this on Saturday, almost immediately. As soon as the news broke that we had in this phenomenally brave, phenomenally brave, innovative, thinking outside the box uh, Israeli military operation, uh, in the same lines, um, within the same groove as the Entebbe uh, rescue from the 1970s. Uh, in the, at the, immediately as this uh, uh, story broke, the Hamas uh, PR machine immediately uh, jumped into action and started talking about um, hundreds of civilian uh, casualties. Our forces were fired on by uh, rocket-propelled grenades, by heavy machine guns, by AK-47s, by with grenades, uh, with very uh, heavy firing. Uh, we, of course, do not discount the possibility, the extremely likely possibility, that where there were civilian casualties during this rescue, that they were more than likely uh, happened from Hamas as well. Um, but we, uh, everyone should understand that this method of, of uh, which Hamas fights, it's not going to save them. It's not going to uh, allow Hamas to keep hold of our hostages. We are going for Hamas. We'll always do our utmost to um, uh, protect civilians. But we're going for this uh, genocidal terrorist organization. We're on the front line of this terror. Uh, we're going for them. We're destroying them here. If we don't destroy them here, God forbid, then they'll be coming to a... a a, a, a town or city or capital town, capital city uh, near you very, very soon. We realize what we're doing. We're not just fighting for Israel. We're fighting for civilization. That is not a cliche. That is reality. Next question, please. Question from Joel Polak, Breitbart News. Congrats on the successful hostage rescue missions mission. Uh, first question is, there are, uh, regarding the reports that the U.S. is seeking a side deal with Hamas over five American hostages, will it complicate Israel's negotiation effort? Thank you for that question, Joel. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Israel has encouraged all countries, whether they have uh, hostages, uh, their nationals within uh, the, the uh, grips of uh, Hamas in Hamas captivity, or whether they don't. Uh, we've encouraged all countries to put maximum pressure on uh, Hamas to get their people, to get our people, uh, all the hostages, 120 uh, which remain, 43 have unfortunately already lost their lives uh, at the hands of Hamas. We're encouraging all countries to do whatever they can to bring their people, to bring our people home. Um, it is a daily war crime. Uh, what they're doing. It's uh, every moment that our hostages are in custody. It's a, it's a terrible humanitarian war crime. Uh, but we will, it's one of our stated war aims to get our people back and we will bring them back. The mums, the dads, uh, the Holocaust survivors, uh, the children, uh, and whether they are alive or unfortunately have been killed by Hamas to uh, afford them the, the decency, the dec a decent burial or uh, here in Israel, we are going to retrieve all of our hostages. Um, next question, please. Second question from Joe Polak. Was the departure of Benny Gantz time to coincide with Blinken's visit, and will the two be meeting? Uh, thank you for that question, Joel. That sounds like a, a question for um, uh, Benny Gantz, uh, or even with um, the Secretary of State Blinken. Uh, I haven't got anything more to add. Uh, just to, as a reminder, 
Um, the Prime Minister uh, is the Prime Minister over a coalition of 64 Knesset members, which is, uh, in Israeli terms, uh, a stable uh, coalition. Uh, he has a majority, and this government is focused on its three war aims, to bring home our hostages, to destroy Hamas militarily and their governing capabilities, and ensure that Gaza never again is, uh, uh, poses a threat uh, to this country. Uh, so we're focused on those war aims and nothing that's happened in the political arena, of which uh, I don't normally comment on, will, will affect that. Next question, please. Last question from Joel Polak. Um, should the U.S. investigate the Palestine Chronicle after one of its contributors, Abdullah al-Jamal, held Israeli hostages while reporting from Gaza for the organization? Thank you uh, very much for that question, Joel. Yes, I have seen reports that uh, the terrorist which was holding three of our hostages in his home uh, with his family um, were, uh, is uh, an employee of not only a contributor to Al Jazeera, which gives a lie to all these uh, accusations we faced uh, over the last eight months of um, us uh, targeting uh, journalists. Uh, many of these journalists, journalists have split personalities. Uh, they work for Hamas, they are Hamas supporters, they are Hamas activists, but they also report in foreign news uh, media. And this, uh, this terrorist uh, in particular being an employee of a 501c3 um, U.S. registered organization which should have charitable status is once again an example of Hamas really uh, casting aside any any of the laws of decency or mix, mixing terrorism with a charitable uh, organization. Yes, of course, the U.S. authorities should uh, investigate this, um, and if it's found to be true, then appropriate measures uh, should be uh, taken. Uh, these are terrorist organizations, uh, you know, the the blinkers should come off many uh, in the international community that um, you know there is a separation between anything which happens uh, in Gaza, uh, whether a journalistic or or a pseudo uh, aid agencies. Almost everything which happens uh, in Gaza is under Hamas control. That's what an Islamic, Islamo-fascist type terrorist organisation does. They control almost every aspect of Gazan society. And, uh, there, of course, many of these uh, uh, pseudo-journalists are not journalists at all. They're hiding behind their uh, uh, press uh, vests. They're hiding behind the notion of journalists. Uh, many in the outside world uh, constantly chastise this country for uh, attacking journalists. We've often produced the proof that these journalists are actually terrorist operatives. And this is a prime example, uh, an Hamas operative holding our hostages while appearing on the uh, Al Jazeera website. We've said very often, and also uh, writing for the Palestine Chronicle, we said very often that these two organizations, that these organizations are working hand in hand. We've given you evidence of that, and we've also given evidence of organizations like UNRWA, who uh, also work uh, hand in hand with Hamas. This must stop. People must stop being naive in the outside world. We're on the front line of this uh, terrorism. We understand it more than anyone. And this country, it's a democracy, it's a free country, with a free press, uh, the, the freest press in hundreds of miles and in any direction. Uh, we know what we're talking about when we make these accusations. And um, casting doubt on, uh, on uh, Israel's assertions really can no longer be an excuse. Uh, so many of these, of these journalists are unfortunately um, also working for terrorist organizations. We saw that on October the 7th. We saw the remarkably qu uh, quick timing of many uh, photojournalists who were there at 6.30. Uh, when the uh, borders of Israel were breached, the photographs that they took, uh, also the photographs which many journalists have in open embrace with uh, Sinwar, the Hamas uh, leader. You know, these are not impartial observers. Uh, they are Hamas operatives, uh, and um, the international community must realize them for what they are. Uh, any other questions? Question from Benjamin Brown, CNN. You just said that hostages were, quote, put to work, end quote, while in Gaza. 
Could you elaborate on this? Thank you, uh, Benjamin, uh, for that question. Um, including uh, the last four hostages, and the, uh, the, which were released on Saturday, uh, and also hostages which have been uh, released uh, from November, have told us that they have been essentially used as slaves, as slaves in um, uh, Gazan households, uh, and that has been backed up by the evidence uh, which they have given, and, and that evidence uh, is coming out uh, more and more. You know, this is a, a very delicate time for hostages uh, who have just been released. Um, I recently heard uh, the, one of the leading doctors at uh, uh, Sheba Hospital uh, who have been dealing with these um, rescued hostages. And after that initial uh, period of euphoria, uh, when these hostages are re reunited with those with their families, I think which of us um, will have not shed a tear to see to see those images of those hostages uh, being reunited uh, with their families after eight long months. Uh, these hostages talk of the fact that they are used as slaves, uh, forced to recite uh, Quranic uh, verses and read Quranic uh, lessons. They are, uh, there are, they are brainwashed uh, while in captivity, telling them that um, Israel has forgotten about them, uh, that uh, Israel is, uh, there, is no, uh, there is no more Israel, Israel's been defeated, that their family don't care about them. Um, and, um, you know, th these are the sorts of uh, testimony which the uh, poor uh, hostages who've been rescued uh, have uh, shared with us, uh, together with... Um, terrible um, um, terrible occasions of rape uh, I happen to hear uh, the live testimony um, of uh, a woman that was released uh, from captivity and um, she talked about the rape at the hands of her captors uh, uh, which is uh, unbearable which is re the reason why we are working so hard to bring uh, our people home. There is uh, every moment of every day we're uh, looking for ways, innovative ways, both through negotiations and through sustained military pressure to bring our people home. I say to you again, and this message should be transferred to uh, Hamas, this war could end now, this afternoon, if Hamas lay down their arms and um, uh, release our hostages. Any other questions? Final question from <clears throat> Jim Williams from Zenger International News Service, Washington, D.C. Following Gantz's departure, will the Prime Minister appoint a successor to his position on the War Council or proceed without filling the vacancy? Thank you for that question, uh, Jim. The Prime Minister will make clear uh, his, uh, his, um, uh, what the, the, the changes uh, in the uh, composition of the uh, War Cabinet uh, shortly, um, as uh, the situation uh, has demanded. I will remind you that this is a uh, relatively stable government with 664 uh, mandates in the 120-seat uh, Knesset. Uh, the government is stable uh, and uh, is purposely fulfill, it's, it is determined to fulfill uh, its uh, three missions in dealing with this uh, war of destroying Hamas, of uh, bringing back our hostages and, of course, uh, ensuring that Gaza never again poses a threat uh, to this country. And for those objectives, there is practically wall-to-wall -wall support uh, for those objectives here in Israel. Uh, so no matter what happens politically, the country is behind, the overwhelming majority of the country is behind those objectives, and we are taking them forward. The reason we are taking them forward is because we understand very well that this is a war for our very existence. We realize that, and we understand that. Hamas, given the opportunity, will do it again. Uh, whether um, there are wishful thinkers out there that think they are deterred or no longer have the strength, um, they will do everything in their, power, in their power to get that strength, but we won't let them. Uh, any idea, any notion that there will be um, a ceasefire without um, or an end to this war without uh, Hamas no longer being in control uh, is fanciful. 
uh, we're going to destroy this terrorist organization and we're going to bring peace back to this region. Any other questions? Question from Dr. Abby Korb. You mentioned hearing from the doctors. The question is, how is the overall health of the recently rescued hostages? Thank you for that question, uh, Abby. Uh, I've seen the reports uh, and the broadcasts of uh, the doctors at uh, Sheba Hospital uh, that have an, are now becoming somewhat of an expert in dealing uh, with the, the, these um, poor uh, hostages that have been uh, rescued. They, in their initial reports, uh, have shown that there is uh, malnutrition amongst these um, poor hostages that have been uh, rescued. There are uh, nutritional deficits uh, which they've suffered from, uh, always not always recognizable from uh, looking at them, uh, but the doctors have made this uh, diagnosis that there is uh, malnutrition and, and uh, nutritional deficits uh, in, their, in, their, um, in their makeup. Uh, you will also have seen that many of them are pale, uh, not being uh, having any sunlight and being locked inside and having very uh, occasional um, opportunities to go into uh, the sunlight. So, um, you know, this is eight months of torture which these poor hostages uh, have been through. Um, this time, uh, as in November, there was a Hamas um, PR exercise to try and um, show hostages smiling uh, as they went into those uh, Red Cross uh, minibuses to be brought back to uh, Israel. Uh, we know that they were the hostages were very often drugged uh, and given uh, medication to uh, give them uh, put smiles on their faces, and we know they were told to smile. Uh, but um, and many of them, of course, complied. What else could they do with a, a masked uh, Hamas gunman with an AK-47 in their hands, uh, threatening them? Uh, make no mistake, this is a, a, a wicked humanitarian um, um, a crime which has been committed against these poor people. Uh, they will need time uh, to recover. Uh, the doctors also spoke about this initial time, uh, time of euphoria, of meeting their um, our family and being reunited with their friends, and also, but also after that, unfortunately, uh, the psychological uh, damage which has been done to these poor people takes time to uh, uh, get over and all of their hostages whether they um, were released in November or the ones which we miraculously through thank God through our phenomenally brave armed forces our innovative armed forces um, that um, managed to do phenomenal work again within the same vein as the Entebbe rescue the Entebbe rescue of course which um, uh, mimicked uh, one of Idi Amin's uh, stretch Mercedes limousines uh, and took it on the plane and flew it onto the runway at Entebbe. Uh, uh, similar things were done uh, by our armed forces, our tremendously brave and innovative armed forces. We are all here in Israel so proud of what they have achieved. It has lifted this nation, but we know that this fight isn't over. We're coming, we, you know, we are making excellent progress. We're defeating these Hamas uh, battalions and we will bring these people home, but there's still work to do, but we are making excellent progress. We feel that the end is, is within sight. Any other questions? No further questions, thank you. Okay, so the next briefing will be uh, tomorrow. And um, we look forward to welcoming you to the next briefing. Thank you very much for joining us. Please do stay safe and bye-bye. Uh, Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajabnik signing off.